The following video will depict the challenges faced by a surgeon whilst performing a phacoemulsification in a patient with a soft cataract. These soft cataracts pose significant challenges. The nuclei are so soft that they do not have enough consistency to allow for the burying of a phaco probe to therefore perform a phaco chop. Moreover, even if the surgeon were to be able to finally impale the nucleus to get a kind of a hold on it, creating a mechanical subdivide is fairly challenging because you don't have a solidish consistency of these nuclei. They tend to splay apart rather than separate. I also find that it is quite difficult to actually sculpt a groove in these soft cataracts. One, because of the consistency of these nuclei and second, the softness and the smallness of these nuclei where you tend to get too deep too soon and often it's possible to endanger the posterior capsule. Moreover, as I explained even earlier, once you make the groove, the mechanical separation of this nucleus into two halves can be quite challenging itself. Thus, I think for all these reasons, performing either a direct chop or a stop and chop or a divide and conquer is not the perfect solution. I'd like to now share with you in this part of the video a few case scenarios wherein the surgeon has attempted to perform a direct chop and all the challenges that the surgeon faced whilst attempting to do so. What you will notice is that when the surgeon using the correct settings tries to perform a direct chop that is tries to impale the nucleus in the mid periphery it is extremely difficult to get a hold of it in fact attempted impaling of the nucleus to get a hold of it results in the emulsification of the tissue which is held so finally you often find yourself left with a large the residual nucleus do not have significant tissue so bringing them out of the capsular bag pose their own level of challenges. So when faced with this challenge, it's very important that if we are able to get a hold of it, we need to maintain that hold. And with the help of a second instrument, as you can see here, once brought up, it is not allowed to fall back into the capsular bag. In this way, the surgeon can very carefully and comfortably complete the nuclear emulsification. The following cases depict exactly the same thing. The creation of the mechanical bowl, the difficulty and the limitations in actually bringing this bowl out of the bag and the challenges these pose to a successful phaco emulsification in these rather soft cataracts. The surgeon in this case is attempting to perform a horizontal chop but a failure to get a good hold of the nucleus in the first place makes the creation of the horizontal chop itself fairly challenging. In this particular case, the pupil has gone down which makes matters even worse. The surgeon now attempts to hold on to that resultant soft mechanical bowl in the mid periphery, prevent it from going back, break it down and somehow manage to complete the nuclear emulsification of this soft cataract. Another option of dealing with a mechanical bowl when faced with one is in creating a groove. So what the surgeon can do is go into the sculpt mode of the phaco emulsification and create a deeper groove in what's left at the bottom. In this manner, the surgeon may be able to mechanically subdivide the nucleus into two halves and complete a successful emulsification. In this case, the surgeon mechanically, with the help of a Sinsky hook, actually yanks out the nucleus out of the capsular bag and emulsifies it. The following case depicts the difficulty in a mechanical separation even when the surgeon is able to get a hold while attempting to perform a direct chop.
After several failed attempts, the surgeon scoops out the amorphous core, emulsifies it, and then deals with the rest of the mechanical bowl in a similar manner as described in the previous few surgeries. Please note that in this particular case, every attempt to get a hold of this mechanical bowl results in the emulsification of that part of the nucleus that's being held. Now this compounds the issue even more. The bowl now gets converted into a flattish plate sometimes and this in itself can pose a significant challenge to safe and complete emulsification of this soft cataract. It can be even more challenging to deal with a soft cataract which also has a posterior polar element to it. Now in this case, the surgeon actually yanks out and scoops out the central soft amorphous core and then again has a resultant epinuclear bowl and with care and caution, without disturbing the posterior pole, brings this epinuclear bowl carefully and completely out of the capsular bag and then emulsifies it. So the easiest way in dealing with a mechanical bowl, if you're unable to get it out, is to just come out of the eye. Do not put in any viscoelastic, but with care and caution, perform a hydroprolapse of one pole of this mechanical bowl, which allows for ease in its subsequent emulsification. Now, having clearly understood the limitations that exist in being able to perform a sculpt, a divide and conquer, a stop and chop, or a direct chop for a patient with a soft cataract, I believe today that the simplest, surest, easiest to perform, easiest to learn, safest, and reproducible technique in managing a soft cataract is by the technique of a hydroprolapse and aspiration or a hydroprolapse and a chop. Let me explain this a little more in detail. In the following video, please note how the surgeon with care and caution performs a very careful cortical cleavage hydrodissection, resulting in the prolapse of one pole of this very soft nucleus. Having achieved that prolapse, the surgeon now just holds on to the elevated pole of the nucleus, downsizes and emulsifies the entire nucleus. Now I think the points you need to note which you will see in this surgery and in the following surgery is that even though you are working on a nucleus that is prolapsed, we are almost using no energy in emulsifying this nucleus. So you do not really need to be concerned about excessive energy being delivered so close to the endothelium. Equally importantly, the fact that you're dealing with these nuclei out of the capsular bag reduces the danger that could occur to the posterior capsule whilst emulsifying these soft cataracts. And finally, if you're dealing with a soft cataract that has a very early nucleus sclerosis, it's still well worth it to do a hydroprolapse, hold up the nucleus in the elevated position, and in this tilted up position, you can perform a direct chop. Once more, remember the energy delivered here is marginal. Energy is only required to impale the nucleus before chopping it, as well as an occasional burst of energy during nuclear emulsification.